Ecuador. Wow, the love I have for this city and Ecuador in general is just unreal. I definitely feel like Ecuador gets overshadowed by Colombia and Peru and people are planning their South American travel itineraries. So I'm here to put Ecuador on the forefront of people's minds and hopefully their itineraries because Ecuador is just so amazing. The food, the culture, the people, and the amount of things that you can do in such a small country is just unmatched. So let me help you plan what to do in Quito, Ecuador by giving you a full three-day itinerary. Day one is going to be the Old Town area, so let's start off at the Basilica and let me just tell you, it is stunning. It opens up at 9 a.m. to try to get there right when it opens to avoid the crowds. Spend some time admiring the outside, taking some photos before heading over to the ticket booth where you can buy tickets to actually go inside the church and up to the towers. It's $4 per person and you can use cash or card. One little tip is to use the elevators to go all the way up. This is something that I didn't even notice the first time that I went. I just saw the stairs and started climbing. I had just arrived in Ecuador so I wasn't acclimated to the elevation yet. So. To say that I was winded by the time I got to the top would be an understatement. So definitely take those elevators up to the top and explore from there so that way you can enjoy yourself and not feel like you're sweating or out of breath. The first place you're going to want to stop is where all the stained glass is and you can actually look down from above into the interior of the church. a couple different levels you can explore before you get to the top which is where you'll actually view the two clock towers. To get up there you'll climb these stairs which is really more like a ladder so it's super sketchy if you're afraid of heights definitely don't look down or you won't want to go all the way up there but it is worth going all the way up because not only can you see the two clock towers and get some nice photos but you have 360 degree views of Quito all around you. spend a few hours here so I think it's the perfect way to start off your time in Quito. Next we'll head over to the Central Market where you'll get some brunch and the first time I came here I spent over two hours in this place. It is absolutely amazing. I was just hopping from stall to stall to stall trying all the local Ecuadorian food that I had never heard of and it was all amazing. It's really the best way to introduce yourself to some of the local Ecuadorian cuisine and get that local Ecuadorian price. I highly recommend trying some yapingachos which are like these fried mashed potato balls that are usually served with eggs and chorizo. Some ensaboyada which is like a fish soup with pickled onions and an empanada de viento which is like a famous Ecuadorian specialty. It's an empanada that's filled with a lot of air and a little bit of cheese. Then you can top it off with some sugar. I even got a glass of barrocho to go with it if you want to do that. If you want some more recommendations on what Ecuadorian food you should eat while you're in Ecuador, just in general, check out my Ecuadorian food video that I'll put here at the top. From here you can head over to Independence Square where you can spend some time hanging out, people watching, and admiring the Church of the Society of Jesus right there in the square as well. walk to San Francisco Catholic Church which is also a pretty nice square area where you can people watch, go shopping in the shops that line the square all around it, and then you can head inside the church if you want to take a look. Then you'll head over to La Ronda Street and this street is super charming, so colorful, has a bunch of little restaurants and shops you can stroll through. I highly recommend stopping here at the Picari Organic Chocolate Shop. All of their chocolate is 100% organic, farmed, and harvested here in Ecuador. To end your day, I've given you two options. Of course, if you have more time, I highly recommend doing both, but go ahead and take a look at the map to see the two options that I have here for you. Number one is the Virgin of the Panaceo, which is a statue up on top of the hill. If you head up here, it gives you not only great views of the famous statue, but also all of Quito down below. And option number two is to head to Ichimbia Park, which also offers amazing views of the city, but with a little bit more of a local feel. I personally like Ichimbia more because I like the local and authentic experience. Everyone is up there, they were local families, kicking around a soccer ball, playing with their dogs. It just made me feel like I was more of a local too, just relaxing in the park and soaking in the views. There also is a Quito sign up there, so if you do want to have that tourist moment, get some good photos with the Quito sign and the views behind you, you totally can. Alright, day two, you're heading to the center of the world literally. You can take the public bus up there for just a few bucks, but also Uber is pretty cheap, so if you have two, three, four people, I would definitely recommend doing that. I was staying in La Carolina Park, and it was just me and my boyfriend, and we Ubered up there, and it was $9 for the two of us. If you're going to take the public bus, awesome, go ahead and do that. If you're going to take the Uber, I actually recommend 
putting in the address to Pululahua Geobotanical Reserve instead of Mitad del Mundo first. Pululahua opens up at 8 a.m., so try to get there right when it opens. One, to avoid the crowd, and two, the fog usually rolls around midday, and once it comes in, it doesn't leave, so you can't really see any of the crater below, so there's not really a point in going. So try to go there earlier, the better, so you have a better chance of seeing this volcanic crater. It's free to enter, but make sure to bring your passport because they're going to ask for that when you try to enter the park. From this reserve, you can view the crater, which is absolutely beautiful, and it's one of only two places in the world where people actually live inside of this active volcanic crater and it's the only one in the world where they farm it. Once you're done at the crater, now you're gonna head to the center of the world, Mitad del Mundo. You can try ordering an Uber from there. We didn't really have much luck with it, but you never know. We ended up asking a local person who was working there to call us a taxi and that worked just fine. It's only a few miles down the road. To enter Mitad del Mundo, it's $3 per person and they will also ask to see your passport. Once you scan your ticket and go inside, it's actually a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was just gonna be the monument for the center of the world, but it's almost like its own little village here. It has a bunch of different shops and restaurants and then obviously the monument that we're all there to see, but what I didn't know is inside of the monument is a museum. So go take your touristy photo where you're standing in two different hemispheres at once, climb up the tower to get some awesome views of the equator, and while you're inside you can learn a little bit more about the history since like I said it is a museum as well. And then once you're done with that you can spend some time walking around the shops and grabbing a bite to eat at one of the restaurants. Although the food is a bit pricier here than it is back in Quito because of course it's a hot tourist spot, it actually is one of the best meals I had in all of Ecuador so I definitely think it's worth it. We got soursop juice, tree tomato juice, locro de papa, some shrimp ceviche, and lomo a la plancha which was smothered in garlic butter and all of that was 22 USD. And while we were eating in the square a local show started happening where they were wearing traditional clothes, doing the traditional Ecuadorian dances to traditional music so that was super fun to watch as well. So overall yes this is a touristy experience which normally I wouldn't be a fan of but it's actually super cool and when you're in Ecuador which is literally named after its location of being along the equator you have to go to the center of the world. And the last day, day three, you'll start it off by going to the Teleferico cable car which opens up at 9 a.m. It's $9 per person for the round trip cable car which you can pay with cash or card and I do highly recommend getting there right at 9 a.m. for two reasons. One, it's super crowded. I went at like 9.30 and I had to wait 30, 45 minutes in line, so try to get there as early as you possibly can. And number two, just like most of Ecuador, around midday is when the clouds roll in, the rain rolls in, so if you can go there as early as possible, you have a better chance of seeing the seven volcanoes that you should be able to see on a clear day from this spot. The cable car ride itself is only a few minutes, but once you get up there, you have a ton of different options on what you can do. There are lots of different hiking trails up here if you want to actually hike all the way up to the Pichincha volcano, or you can go to a few of the different viewpoint areas up there and just get some nice views without having to do some hiking. There's one platform right off of the cable car entrance and exit where it'll give you a little map and it'll show you all the seven different volcanoes that you should be able to spot on a clear day. Unfortunately for us, it was not a clear day, which is very, very common in Quito, so if you do get to see all seven volcanoes, consider yourself very very lucky but we did get to see some vapor coming out of the top of Cotopaxi volcano which was super cool to see then you can head up one of the trails just for a few minutes and you can go to those famous swings where you're swinging and overlooking all of Quito Ecuador below you so overall it definitely is a must-see spot in Quito you can spend one to two hours just doing the cable car and the viewpoints or you can spend a half day or a full day if you want to do all of the hikes up there totally up to you what you want to do but after this you're gonna head down and get some food you're going to get some empanadas de morocho here it's really, really close by and it opens up at 11 a.m. Let me just tell you, these empanadas are insanely good and she's won a ton of awards that you can see all over the walls when you walk into the restaurant. What makes this empanada different is that it's not made out of a flour dough, it's actually made out of the morocho dough, hence empanada de morocho, which is made from white corn. It's super, super crispy and flaky on the outside and on the inside it's stuffed with typically a meat, rice, and veggies. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that steam. Mm -hmm. My camera's fogging up. <laughs> <laughs> that looks great. Plus, the owner is incredibly nice. She sat down with us, she was chatting with us, trying to practice her English, and then she told us that right next door she owned the apartment and she Airbnbs it out with an incredible rooftop terrace. So she took us up there. We didn't pay anything extra. We weren't staying in the Airbnb. 
but she just took us up to the rooftop terrace so we could look at different views and get some really cool photos. So I highly, highly recommend visiting her just to hang out with her, but also to try her amazing empanadas. From here, you can head to La Carolina Park, which is like Quito's version of New York Central Park. It is massive, and you can spend so much time just exploring all the different areas that this park has to offer. There's a skate park, there's an actual track, there's basketball courts, soccer fields, a separate area as a dog park, even though dogs are allowed to go anywhere in the park as well. And if you like botanical gardens, there is a botanical garden within La Carolina Park itself. It's open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and costs four dollars to enter. After that, if you're hungry, you can make your way up to the top or the northern part of La Carolina Park and you can head to In Aquito Market, which is very similar to the Central Market, just not as big. But again, it's a great place to get some cheap local food. You can get something that you already got in Central Market and you loved or try something completely new. And to finish off the day, you're just gonna go ahead and stay in this area. In my personal opinion, it's the best area in Quito for walking around, shopping, eating, there are three shopping malls within walking distance in this area, and the entire east side of La Carolina Park is filled with so many incredible international restaurants. This is actually the area that I lived in when I stayed in Quito for a month. If you want to check out my apartment, I'll link it up here. It was on the east side of La Carolina Park, so I have tons and tons of restaurant recommendations. If you do want to head to the mall, I think the Key Central Mall, which I'm going to put right here because I might be mispronouncing it, is the best mall in the area. And my favorite restaurants in the area are Kobe Sushi. You can get 40 pieces of sushi for like 17 bucks and Coco Doc, which has amazing Korean fried chicken but really if you walk along Avenue Republica de El Salvador which leads you right to the mall there are so many amazing restaurants so just take a walk and pick which one looks best to you so there you have it three full days in Quito Ecuador for those of you who have been following my digital nomad journey through South America know that I spent six Whole weeks in Ecuador. Four of those weeks were spent specifically in Quito as my home base. I did a few weekend trips here and there, but I absolutely love Quito and I hope that you love it too on your next trip. If you have any Quito or Ecuador specific questions, throw them in the comments below. I'd love to help you out. Don't forget to hit that like button if you found this video helpful and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as I continue my digital nomad journey through South America. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.